were born and raised on this island, and my question for you is, how has living here all your life affected your artwork through the years? Um, well, I, I think the island, like myself, has evolved over the years. Um, and the nice thing about living on an island that's constantly evolving, you know, in one way, shape, or form, either by the people that have come here or the people who have left here, um, is that it leaves both a memory and it also, you know, changes the present moment and it always kind of leaves you with a sense that the future can be different in some way, shape, or form. Um, the benefit of something, of an island that's so old that has, you know, like 10,000 years of history you know, geological history, and then, you know, tons and tons of history, you know, with the Wampanoag all the way until the Europeans came, which was my family, um, is that, you know, it's constantly changing, constantly evolving, and there's memory in it, you know. Um, I have my own memories of places and spaces that I'm nostalgic about, um, that definitely finds its way into the work. There's stuff that, um, there's, I look at places with memory and have a romantic connection to it, you know. So when I look at Split Rock on Lambert's Cove, I have a whole series of memories with my father, my grandfather, catching my first bluefish there, for example. Uh, you know, I work there in the summer. You know, when, you know, I have a piece over here, a uh, flat point farm with a sheep in it, and I have a connection to that piece, I have a connection to this piece, this one here? Um, yeah, this one here because, you know, my father and my grandfather were friends with the fishers and, you know, we exchanged hay and animals throughout the, throughout the years, you know. Um, and, you know, the funny thing, well, sad, tragic thing, is the barn burned down, I believe it was last year, and of the flock that was over 75 years old, um, basically perished in that. And I had happened to catch, uh, you know, picture of sheep out there on um, Flat Point Farm, and this is, you know, one of the sheep from that last, you know, uh, multi generational flock that the Fishers had, and, you know, I wanted to capture that in some way, shape, or form, you know, and fortunately, I have a friendship with, you know, Doug Brush, who's married to Emily Fisher, who's, you know the granddaughter of Arnie Fisher, um, who had the original flock and everything. So it's stuff like that. Those are those things that affect your work that provides context. Um, and then just the opportunities to be in places um, at times where you can capture light, where you can capture a landscape, where you can tell a story and, you know, give some context to people. You know, you know, there's the obvious beauty of Martha but there's also the history, which is kind of, which is beautiful too, you know. What is the inspiration for his recent body of work? Okay, so from my recent body of work, um, I think just if I'm gonna narrow it down, you know, early on I was starting off just like working on color, being interested in color. Um, I've adjusted my palette over the past couple of years, brought some new stuff into it, you know, more warm colors, more um, pinks and purples, something that I didn't necessarily work with earlier on. Um, I also had harsher compositions where like, the shadows are really strong, and I kind of pulled back from that a little bit to soften it. Um, so that was one focus at the beginning, but obviously as the the epidemic started happening. I had to revision um, why I was making artwork. And one of the things that was really important to me is, well, one of the things that was important to me just as a person and as a member of this community, and then thinking about how I can be of service to people at, at large is I find that my artwork, because I'm really focused on organizing compositions, um, it really gives people a sense of like peace and sometimes solace. And I think the great thing about Martha's Vineyard or the landscape in general, that's something I like inspiration from, is that it allows people to 
feel at peace. You know, the work that I'm creating um, is really about connecting people with a, a peaceful space and, and a place that they feel safe in. Nice. And that's really what my goal is. I think going forward, I really, I like that. And um, that's, a, that's a big focus of what I'm doing. Tell me about this painting, which is new for your 2020 show, Lucky to Be Here. Lucky to Be Here, um, okay. Well, Lucky to Be Here is, well, there's a couple things about Lucky to Be Here. Um, I, I went out to the point here when, it was a couple of years back with my, with my two sons. Um, what point is it? Uh, it's Norton Point. Um, so it's out at Norton Point over on uh, Chappaquiddick. And the funny thing is I went out there with both my sons because I used to go out there all the time with my grandfather and my father fishing. And there's some like really great memories. It's obviously changed a lot because of you know beach erosion and everything, but it's still a beautiful place and it's special. I had a really wonderful day with my kids out there, and I captured some pictures of it. Um, I did an original painting, um, well, a different version of this painting. Um, it was similar composition and everything, which I really loved. That really tell, like, made me feel something about the space. Um, but as I've been playing with color, I wanted to revisit it and just at a different time of day. So um, I captured the same composition, but from more of an early morning. Um, and I think just playing with, even just playing with the, the colors allowed me just to tell a little bit more story about this, of like how I feel about it. And I know that a lot of people feel that way too. So I just wanted to like share my feeling about it and you know how it makes me feel peaceful and solace and I kind of wanted to project that to the world so um, people could experience that as well even you know no matter what 